not this. Because, uh... I don't think he did that. Like, I'm actually, uh, like, I don't, I don't, I don't think he actually, I don't think he actually cut the launch pad loose. He did the opposite. I think he did the opposite. Huh. Well, I guess that, hmm. Me thinking that this, uh, he would be delighted, like, would be delighted because, oh, I got an idea. Like, when someone gets an idea, like, he gets some sort of a, a slight joy of actually seeing that uh, uh, he, ha he can actually do something here. Uh, it might actually help here, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, feeling uh, happy because he actually found... Uh, uh, a way to mitigate uh, that situation somehow. But I think what he actually did is uh, lock the door back again because it was open. It was originally open and now he wants to lock it again. So sideways, uh, having the uh, the knob sideways is actually me meaning that it's actually uh, open. But you know what? Actually, it doesn't. In actuality, it doesn't. Yeah, I guess in actuality it doesn't. Otherwise, otherwise this door won't be uh, won't be uh, like uh, this corridor won't be connected to, to the uh, boarding lounge. So I guess vertically is the one that means it's uh, it actually that means that actually the safety lock is off. Hmm. I had no choice but to disengage the safety lock. You make it sound like you were reluctant to do so. And yet, when you did it, you felt some joy. As if you were pleased with yourself. I would definitely... Like, my idea here is that... Oh, may, like, he actually, like, found an idea. Like, uh... B like, uh... Like, how someone gets an idea in the, in the spur of the moment. When someone, like, uh... Oh, he, he felt like, oh, this is the idea that I actually need, need to do. This is why he's feeling a little joy. Like, oh, this is going to work. And immediately went through it. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is how I interpreted the, uh, the, uh, the reaction here. But, um... Uh... How do you do it? How do you know everything as if uh, you were there? Pretty impressive, isn't it? This is the power of analytic uh, psychology. So, care to explain why you feel joy when you disengage the safety lock? When I think back on the facts we've discovered up to this point, I have to believe that you were trying to fulfill some hidden agenda. Ah! How do you know about that too? <laughs> Because I'm more uh, or less a pro at guessing. Uh, but you have new proof that I had a hidden agenda. And even if I did, I would never, ever tell you. So there. I know they say people regress as they grow older. But you, sir, take the cake. In what way? And how could you doubt a man with such great intensity? Intelligence and integrity. Integrity. Silence. You, a man of integrity, don't make me laugh. P Prosecutor Blackwell? What came over him all of a sudden? You've spouted nothing but falsities since you stepped up to the stand. You're not the kind of man that will be glorified in the, in the, uh, in the annals of history. 
Not for greatness, anyway. Unless you consider greatest uh, barefaced liar an honor. L -l -l liar? Gulp. His, wor his words bite harder than his blade. You moved Launchpad 1 after the explosions. My, how naive you are. You fail to realize how even the facts themselves have betrayed you. You know, just a thought. But modern English can be your friend. What? What, what do you mean by that? And here's the thought for you. Immediately following the bomb, I mean, w w I don't get it. You fail to realize you, uh, how even the facts themselves have betrayed you. What, the, what did uh, Phoenix here mean? Like, speak plain English? And there's a thought for you. Immediately following the bombing, Launchpad 1 was on the boarding lounge uh, one side. The police confirmed this on scene. All right. So that means the director didn't move the launch pad? He just disengaged the lock. I think you have to do something else to to uh, to to move the actual uh, launch pad itself. Curse my judgment for calling history's greatest liar to the witness stand. Let us leave him to indulge in his lies and war games to his heart's content. Liar! Objection! But it doesn't make sense. You cannot deny that someone turned the, that knob. And once that safety lock was released, I'm sure the pad uh, must have went somewhere. If we chase down the truth of, of this issue, we just might find where the killer escaped to. <laughs> You're sure it must have went somewhere? We just might find out? Your arguments are nothing but conjecture, bluffing, and wishful thinking. Stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is. Or are you not a man enough to? Boy? Boy. Gah! <laughs> Calling him a boy? He's old. <laughs> Talk about hitting, hitting below the belt. Y young ones these days. I don't understand it. I'm sure Director Cosmos must have moved the launch pad. Maybe it has something to do with the trash chute. Again, trash chute. The knob was definitely turned after he came to the lounge. But the launch pad is right where it's supposed to be. Ah! Wait a minute. Maybe I have it all backwards. What if the director turned the knob not to move the launch pad away, but to bring it back to where it was supposed to be? Like, I actually th Yeah, I did think of this, viewers, but... Uh, I mean, this, this may... Like, this is kind of gonna contradict this. Unless I'm uh, misunderstanding the whole thing. So this is when... Uh, when both... Uh, well, assume... Uh, uh, you know, allegedly both, uh, uh, well, one of them is definitely gonna be Starbuck, and the other one is Clay. Who knows which one is which, but, uh, regardless. That means that this, uh, corridor was, uh, still in place, and the lock was engaged. Meaning that the platform, the launch pad 1, isn't going to move anywhere. Unless, as I said, unless 
you actually like this is only gonna control the lock not the actual command to move the pad the uh, launch pad so i mean we can just uh, ask uh, <laughs> we can just ask uh, the director himself which way is uh, is it gonna which way uh, will engage the lock and which way is it gonna disengage it but that bring it back to where it was supposed to be What are you blathering about? What if the launch pad was at the launch uh, uh, at the launch site before the incident? And then after the incident, Director Cosmos moved it back to its uh, usual spot. All he had to do was turn the knob to call the launch pad back. So is that really it? You can actually call the launch pad from there? You don't need to do anything else? That's kind of stupid. All he had to do was turn the knob uh, to call the launch pad back and it would be right where the police found it. Gah! Whoa, his hair! <laughs> I just noticed that. He actually cut his hair. Oh, uh, he's sighing like uh, Solomon. <laughs> you made him sigh like Mr. Starbuck. Was what I said really that off base? It pains me to have to explain how wrong your own logic is to you. However... Our great liar turned the knob only after he discovered the crime scene. Indeed, the pad exis uh, the pad existed. The pad existed. Mm, the pad existed beyond the lounge when our Astro Wonders made their escape. In fact, in fact, that has been recorded for the po uh, for the posterity. On film, uh, on film, and filmless film. Our great lion to the knob only after he discovered the crime scene. What if the third person was there, ready for them? He was the one that actually called the launch pad. They came out and then he sent it back so they cannot escape or something like that. Because he would be, uh, he would be, uh, like standing in the southern door where they cannot escape. Or at least one of them can't escape, which is, I'm gonna assume it's Clay. Because Clay cannot open the uh, control room door. And of course, the launch pad uh, is, is away because he actually sent it away after they, uh, they arrived here, so. That's a possibility. Indeed, the pad, uh, uh, the pad exists beyond the lounge when our Astro Wanders made their escape. Did I miss on that? Uh, a fact that has been recorded on uh, for posterity on Film's film. All right. So to reiterate, stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is, boy. Ah, he called you boy again. Get a grip, Mr. Wright, and focus. We know the launch pad must have been moved. But our deduction and the actual facts uh, of the case are in, in direct contradiction to each other. Well, maybe two astronauts never actually boarded the rocket. This is something that I also brought uh, back, but then again... Yeah, what, what does this mean? This footage could be a fake, taken with body doubles after the incident or something.
actually... How can we prove that, though? Can we? Yeah, we have no details, really. The switch could be fake, taken with body doubles after the incident or something. We cannot prove that, though. On second thought, that's too far-fetched, even for me. Uh, I think the idea of... Uh, like, we, uh, we already know that these guys probably are not the, the same guys, I think. Like, I don't... Uh, like... Uh, as I said... I don't think this is Sarba carrying clay. Because we cannot uh, identify them. And not to mention that there's something about uh, the oxygen tanks as well. Because that uh, that uh, that one that actually indicates that's fifty percent, it might actually be it actually might be clays. Uh, but still, but still, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of problems. Not to mention the uh, the fact uh, uh, the lighter. Still, we haven't gotten to the lighter. The lighter is definitely gonna identify that person. Pretty much. On second thought, that's too far-fetched, uh, even for me. Never actually boarded the rocket? Yeah, th as I said, this is something that I actually said before. They've never been on the rocket. That's uh, That explains uh, how... You know, how you can... How can you actually uh, bring both... Uh, you know, someone was unconscious inside the rocket. And they had to do a little like to, to showcase that again. Someone was bo uh, someone was inside the, uh, the rocket. And this is where you, this is where you board the rocket. So are you telling me that someone was unconscious and got, someone ca carried that guy and then, and then went down with him, uh, carrying that guy and the uh, capsule? Don't let's not forget the capsule carrying him and the capsule down there. This is why I thought that. Uh, if that's actually true, if someone was carrying someone else, and that means that, uh, well, that means that, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, have never happened, uh, you know, these guys have never been, uh, on board the rocket at all. Yeah, this is something that I brought on way, way before, early on in the, uh, in this case. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe. Just maybe. Huh? Prosecutor Blackwell? What if I told you that the two astronauts... ...never set foot inside the launch pad area, but instead went to another place? They went to the space museum because you can you can release the lock on the space museum and bring it to the to the launch pad. I mean that is one way for someone that's in the far uh, uh, that someone inside the uh, space museum to actually go there. But wouldn't that require someone to be outside here? And the, uh, like, isn't the, uh, locking mechanism, uh, mechanism is, uh, is actually outside the, the corridor that leads, uh, to both sides? So there are no locks here, or here. If there's gonna be a lock, of course, we know that the lock is gonna be here, but I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be a lock here, and there's, this is the only place where you can actually engage and disengage the lock, so... I wonder how this was going to work. So, a Prosecutor Blackwell, what if I told you that the two astronauts never set foot inside the launch pad area, but instead went to a, another place? And what if it? And what if when the director moved launch pad one back, 
It was not from the launch site, but from another place. What would you say then? Cut the existential bull, or I'll cut you. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you will explain yourself at once. I know I'm right. It was all the other way around for the from the beginning. Very well, Your Honor. Let me explain. Director Cosmos' reason for moving Launchpad 1 was... To hide it? No. To switch it with another place? To trap the killer? Uh, to switch it? I like. I'm still going to assume that that the cosmos is protecting the killer. I mean, that makes sense for the joy, uh, uh, for the joy uh, uh, emotion. So. So yeah, pretty much not uh, not to trap the killer. He didn't do that to trap the killer at all. But he did that to switch it to a to a, to a different place where he can where he or she can actually run away. You know, and exit from the other side, of course, from the same place as the museum. Although does that work? I'm going to go with this. Because he wanted to switch it with some other place. I'm sorry, but did you say switch it? But what could he possibly have switched uh, the launch pad with? Oh, you'd be surprised, Your Honor. All it takes is a little thinking outside the box, and the answer becomes clear as day. I'm not thinking outside the box. This is. What he was a, a switch with a launch pad one. The space museum. Launch pad one was switched with the space museum? In the past, the space museum used to be launch pad two. It has all the same features as launch pad one and can even be moved to the launch to the launch site. Meaning the Space Museum and Launchpad 1 can also be switched with each other. You can't mean... The rocket the astronauts boarded was not the one in Launchpad 1. It was the one in the Space Museum. Are you telling me that the murder happened here? Huh. That still doesn't make sense since they were preparing to launch. Why would they go here? It doesn't make sense. What did he just say? What did uh, Blackwell say here? Boulder Dash! <laughs> and yet, it's the only explanation that accounts for every riddle and inconsistency. This is how the Space Center was just before the incident. I see Launchpad 1 and the, the Space Museum have already switched places. That's right. And when the two switched like this, the astronauts entered the Space Museum from Boarding Lounge 1. This allowed the killer to enter Launch Pad 1 and, uh, from the Boarding Lounge 2 and set the bomb on the rocket. Come to think of it, 
I mean, are we gonna assume that the one that the bombs are is the same as the killer? There's gotta be a reason for that, though. Come to think of it, the door to the Space Museum from Boarding uh, Lounge 2... Welcome, welcome. The Space Museum is open to the public every day uh, of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Exactly. Anyone could pass through the door uh, to the Space Museum. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> Are you telling me that this is this door is actually designed to make people not go into into the goddamn uh, launch pad? But uh, they can easily access uh, the launch pad when it's switched back. That means that the, the killer was actually here when he disengaged the lock and then went all the way back. Like, let me showcase it here. Uh, not the, from this one. Uh, no, I think it's from this one. Yeah, so the killer actually went through here, switched it, went back. And the uh, two idiots went uh, to the museum. Museum should be here. And then they just got in here. It doesn't make sense. It still doesn't make sense. Like, wouldn't they, uh, you know, report that, hey, where someone actually switched the launch pad one with the museum? What gives? There's no finger... Er, there is no fingerprint recognition system on that door. In other words, with the two launch pads switched like that... Someone other than Mr. Starbuck could have easily planted that bomb. Gah! Balderdash! After setting the bomb on the rocket, the culprit snuck into boarding lounge one and waited there, concealed. In order to kill Mr. Terran, when the two astronauts uh, emerged from the space museum. Recall that Miss Blackwell, uh, recall that Miss Blackwell, Miss Sarbuck, and the director all saw a suspicious figure. Who we can suppose, after killing Mr. Terran, made their escape into the space museum. After that, Director Cosmos switched uh, the two launch pads back. Without realizing the killer was inside the space museum, I think he know who the killer is. Huh? Arm? Detective Arm might be actually a suspect as well. If that. No, 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 no. It's, it's way too fast for her to actually get there. It's way fast to her. No, 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 never mind. The killer then left the Space Museum and made a clean getaway. Right, Dono? I see you know how to handle a sword and handle it well. Perhaps I should call you Swords, Swordsmaster Bluff? Bluff? I'm a seasoned warrior who, who has cut down many, pro, uh, many a prosecutor. God damn. Shut up. <laughs> but unless you can prove your theory, it's no better than a rusty sword. That's right. You have no proof I switched the launch pads. Somebody needs a better anger management counselor. If the launch pads really were switch, there might be a record uh, of it somewhere. I don't think so. We don't have any. We might actually need uh, to call uh, Aura for this. We need to call uh, Bla Black uh, Simon's uh, sister here. 
If the launch pad really were Switch, there might be a record of it somewhere. At this point, launch pad 1 and the space museum were Switch with each other. So the corridor beyond the door should be uh, the one that belongs to the space museum. Let's see. This is an image of the launch pad 1 corridor. Surprisingly, we don't have... Uh, <laughs> surprisingly, we don't have... Uh, uh, a picture uh, this in our record. How did you get access to it? Do you see anything different when we compare the security uh, when the when we uh, when we compare it to the security footage? There's a number two. Yep. All right. I guess I see it. Huh? Th the number on the floor. Ah, th th the game didn't even bother letting me <laughs> do that. Well, what do you know? It looks like we have proof after all, Prosecutor Blackwell. And if this is just another bluff, he's gonna double the penalty. Oh, don't worry. It's all right here. Right in this footage. Proof that uh, beyond this door is the corridor to the Space Museum. Very well then. Answers, answer this for me, if you would. What in this footage proves that the corridor belongs to the Space Museum? It's number two of heat. There's a 1 on the floor of the launch pad 1 corridor. But take a look at the floor on the corridor and the security footage. I gotta be honest with you viewers. The fact that we didn't have the picture, the pictures of both corridors at the same time uh, makes it make this uh, actually hard to spot. So I, I think I can understand how people might actually uh, fail to, to check this because... Uh, the number two was barely vi visible in the footage there, and uh, like if we actually had the picture of that, we might actually get a hint of uh, maybe we can actually uh, we're gonna give uh, have an idea of uh, hey we, we might actually need uh, to uh, to prove that uh, which corridor is uh, the one that they came out from. Uh, but uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, the way that this case is constructed, uh, it's constructed like to try and, uh, and you know, question you without being prepared. Even though the the idea of this game is actually giving you all of the evidence that you need and be prepared. Some of them are, are uh, kind of omitted, and the game try the game tries to rely on your memory of remembering of things happened before, which is uh, gotta be honest, kind of stupid. It is kind of stupid. But take a look at the floor of the corridor in the security footage. Do you see the number on the floor behind the astronauts? It doesn't look like a 1, does it? That's because what you see is actually part of a 2! What? Why is it a 2 and, uh, and not a 1? That's because the corridor you see is the 1 to the Space Museum. Gah! That guy's already hit, though. <laughs> and so that means... The corridor in this footage was not filled with smoke? That's right, because the explosion didn't occur in the Space Museum. The explosion occurred in Launch Pad 1, on the side opposite... Opposite the Space Museum. And now that we know the two astronauts escaped from the, the Space Museum... The mystery from the, from the previous trial of how they got down the ladder is cleared up. That doesn't make any sense, and let me tell you why. The reason... The reason uh, Clay got unconscious is just because he, he got injured from the, the explosion. So, 
what happened to him? Well, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that. Uh, Then again, yeah, then again, yeah, well, I guess someone, yeah, this guy is actually uh, Solomon, and this guy is probably Clay. Clay might actually be the one, and Clay might actually, I don't know, he might be cheating, uh, like, trying to, uh... to force his way in or something like that like he maybe he actually did that maybe clay was the one that actually did all of that clay is actually here suspicious uh, in suspicion of actually planting all these bombs there's like there there are three people here that are in, that are involved this is uh, i think this is solomon and this is clay and the third party the killer was the one that actually knew about Clay's plans. Interesting. And now that we know the two astronauts escaped from the Space Museum, the mystery from the previous trial of how they got down the ladder is cleared up. Mr. Taryn carrying Mr. Starbuck. I guess we established that, huh? That tray, uh, the cl uh, the clay was uh, carrying Sarbuck, or carrying Solomon. Somebody took the elevator from the upper level down to the middle level. Just incredible. The two launch pads were actually switched. But you'd think someone uh, would have noticed an event of this magnitude. Yeah. Everyone was down in the basement shelter when the launch pads. Uh, we're, sw uh, we're swapped back. Well, I guess that makes sense. That makes sense why uh, nobody would notice uh, th all of that. Not to mention nobody is actually being stuck in the museum because everyone was evacuating. So all of that was planned. So that means, yeah, I guess now we found a reason why the killer actually used the uh, bombs. Interesting. Everyone is down in the basement shelter when the launch pad were swapped back. There's no way anyone could have known what, what was happening on the surface. Ah, uh, zero percent. All cleared. Bye bye. <laughs> no more lies, Director Cosmos. It is high time you told us the truth. I don't think he's the killer. Is he? I, don't, I still don't think he's the killer. My honor, my glory. It's gone high wire. <laughs> Stars. Oh, my stars, my glory! Whoa! Oh! <laughs> no, not that way! The bailiff! On your seat and after that witness teed? <laughs> On your seat? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I see you managed to retrieve you before you came to any bodily harm. Director Cosmos, do you admit you switched the launch pads? Ugh. <sighs> I admit it's true. I switched launch pad one for the space museum. Ah, uh, it is good to hear words I can believe for a change. <laughs> Before you do, your honor, two things. 
First, we don't know if Mr. Terran had prior knowledge of the switch. As for, some, uh, as for Mr. Sarbuck, he was unaware of, the sur uh, of his surroundings thanks to, uh, to his medication. His medication? Didn't we establish that he didn't take them? And he was, you know... Somebody slipped it to him? <clears throat> Either way, Mr. Chan would have uh, realized the instant he stepped into the space museum. That it had been switched with Launchpad 1. I think they already knew. So my first question is, if, uh, if the Space Museum was perfectly fine, why did Mr. Tan feel the need to put on such a dramatic display? Actually, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, they were, maybe they were preparing, like, like they, the, they just went to the museum to do something and they were preparing to go to the launch, but uh, that was the, you know, the launch day. So if you're telling me why are they wearing all of that, then, then yeah. As for my second question. I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. Uh, please. I can't. I exercise my right to remain silent. Uh, he's pleading the fifth? Pleading the fifth? The fifth? But I will say, my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could, uh, what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. Ugh. The director is terrified. Terrified from what? He must have had, uh, he must have had one heck of a reason uh, for not wanting to explain why. Probably not a good time to try... Uh, to pry it out of him, huh? Why would you say that? I mean, what... What if he doesn't say anything here? What if he doesn't say anything here? Doesn't that uh, doesn't that make him uh, a suspect? Doesn't that actually that make him a suspect? Yeah, kinda. They kinda make him suspect. So uh, people like uh, <laughs> they're gonna put you to uh, uh, in jail because uh, you know because uh, you're a, a main suspect now. Excuse me, but would you mind if I picked up my stars? Without my badge of rank, I'm nothing. I don't see why not. Bailiff, help the director retrieve his stars. It appears the possibility of a culprit other than the defendant has presented itself. Yeah, pretty much. Mr. Starbuck, is there anything you wish to say? I don't get it. Don't get it? What don't you get? Director, why did you do all that? From the very beginning, you never meant for the launch to go ahead, did you? You... you tricked us! Mrs. Starbuck? Starbuck, my boy. I'm sorry. I can't tell you the reason why. But I had to do it to protect the Space Center. Director! Will I... Will I ever get the chance to go into space again?
I'm trying to just try and notice uh, something here. This person is still missing, and this is, of course, uh, Aura. This appears to be Starbuck. Maybe his brother, I mean, we don't know. Is there anything different here with his badge? No. Hmm. Very interesting. Yes. Yes, of course. I won't rest until it happens. I will get you into space again, my boy. Then the dream is still alive. Silence. What the?